Magnetic Induction If a natural magnet is brought near magnetic substances such as iron, nickel, cobalt, etc., it induces magnetic properties in them. This property is called magnetic induction. Magnetic induction is used to make artificial magnets. There are several methods which can be used to make artificial magnets. The first method is single touch method. In this method, the steel bar to be magnetized is placed on the table. A bar magnet is then taken and one of its poles is placed on one end of the steel bar. Stroke the steel bar with a bar magnet from one end, that is A, to the other end, that is B. Keep the magnet inclined. When the magnet reaches at the position B, lift it and place it again on the position A. Repeat the process several times. The upper side of the steel bar gets magnetized. Now, turn the steel bar upside down and stroke its lower side with a bar magnet several times until it gets magnetized. Point A or the starting point of the steel bar will get the same polarity as the pole of the magnet touching it. Point B or its other end gets the polarity opposite to the magnetizing pole. The second method is double touch method. Place the steel bar to be magnetized on the table. Place two strong magnets in the center of the steel bar in such a way that their opposite poles are close to one another. Stroke the steel bar with the magnets. That is, move the magnets to the opposite ends, keeping them inclined. Repeat the process several times until the steel bar gets magnetized. Point A, where the north pole touches the steel bar, becomes the south pole, and the other end of the steel bar, or point B, becomes the north pole, as the south pole of the magnet touches it. The magnetic properties of artificial magnets made by the single touch method and double touch method can be tested. Place some iron nails on the table. Bring the magnetized steel bar near the iron nails. The steel bar attracts the nails, indicating that the steel bar is with the induced magnetism. The third method is the electrical method. In this method, an insulated copper wire is wound on a steel rod to be magnetized. The free ends of the copper wire are connected to the battery. To construct a battery, a number of dry cells are connected in series with the positive terminal connected to the negative terminal of the adjacent dry cells. Allow the current to flow for some time. The steel bar gets magnetized. The polarity of the rod depends on the direction of the current. If the rod is viewed from point A and the current is flowing in a clockwise direction, then the point attains the south polarity. If the current appears to be flowing in an anti-clockwise direction, then that end attains the north polarity. The steel bar does not lose its magnetism easily. Rather, it retains the magnetism for a long time. Its retentivity is high, thus it becomes a permanent magnet. Thus, the electrical method is more suitable to make high strength or powerful magnets. The magnets hanging on the refrigerator door, holding up an artwork or photos are examples of permanent magnets. If the bar is a soft iron bar, and when it becomes a strong bar magnet, it is called electromagnet. But as soon as the current is stopped, this magnet seizes its magnetism. Let us learn how to make an electromagnet. Take a soft iron bar 
of a required shape. Wind an insulated copper wire on it and connect the ends of the wire to a battery along with the switch. The switch is used to make or break the circuit. If the current is switched on or allowed to pass through the copper wire, then the iron bar becomes a high strength or powerful magnet. If the current is switched off, it loses its magnetism immediately. Thus, an electromagnet is the one which gets magnetized when a current is passed through the surrounding coil and loses its magnetism when the current is switched off. Electromagnets have many industrial applications. They are used to lift cars and other materials in scrap yards. They are also used in electric bells. The fourth method which is used to make artificial magnets is the induction method. An iron bar or a steel bar is placed near a strong magnet and it gets magnetized. The end of the bar near the south pole of the magnet becomes a north pole and the other end becomes a south pole. A magnet attracts an iron body only due to induction. The region of the iron body over which a magnet has its influence and attracts the iron body is called magnetic field. A magnet is always surrounded by a magnetic field. Hence, when an iron body is placed in this field, magnetic induction takes place and thus the iron body gets magnetized. A magnet is surrounded by a magnetic field which is made of magnetic lines of force or magnetic flux. To prove this, let's carry out an activity. Place a drawing board over a magnet and fix a white paper on it. Sprinkle some iron fillings on the white paper. Tap the paper gently. The iron fillings will arrange themselves in definite patterns. These definite patterns or the curved parts made by iron fillings indicate the magnetic lines of force. A magnet loses its magnetism by vibrations or rough treatment such as hammering, dropping, etc. particularly when it is lying in the east-west direction. A magnet loses its magnetism when it is heated to redness and then allowed to cool while it is lying in the east-west direction. The process used for destroying the magnetism of a permanent magnet is called demagnetization. To conclude, magnetic induction is a property which allows us to make artificial magnets which are of great use.